We still got a quarter battery power, so let's see if we can make it. This is part 52. It's line 7 of the WOW signal. And it's called Line 7 Alien UFO Study WOW Logarithms Leonard, Leonhard Euler Law Laws of Kepler Orbital Period Hipparchus Arparchus Earth's Axis. <laughs> Sorry. So um, some words come up. C 6 EQ UJ5 Logarithms 6 and 2 are ancient numbers. And let's go over here. So there's 6 and 2. We're going into this part, lines 1 to 6, so those are my notes there. So the number E is an important mathematical constant, approximately equals 2.71828, that is the base of the natural logarithms. It looks like I've got the number, the 12.71828.24 divided by 1 and 31. 1 and 31. Like that. See, I started doing it one way and then I kind of forgot because I was doing this. This one was done December 29th at 10.42 p.m. So these are the words that come up. Leon, Leonard Euler and a Q analog of the logarithm comes up. Then we have Survenancy and Yar Ramjan, 1887-1920, Indian mathematician who made significant contributions to the development of partition functions and summation formulas involving constants such as pi. He's best known for an antidote of a discussion he had with G.H. Hardy on the dullness of 1729. I don't know what this means. I thought it was the year, but I think it's actually something else, 1729. Some of his discoveries have been found to have applications in physics, particularly crystal lophagry. And then we've got the Ryman spear denoted is the one-point publication of the complex plane obtained by defining the limits of all Extending rays from the origin as one single point is infinity. Can be viewed as a two sphere with the top point corresponding to the point at infinity and bottom point corresponding to the origin. So, and then it, we've got properties of logarithms. Oh, I see what I did. So I looked up the different letters in this signal. Okay, that's what we did. So this one's Q. Q brings up the Leonard Euler and Q analog of the logarithm. The next one was U from that there. Properties of logarithms is U and it comes up as log. Properties of left for base A but logarithmic in common the mistakes of logarithms. Then I got mathematical foundations of logarithms. And then what's this next one? J5. It brings up one joule dash five or 0 0.2 joules. And Greek astronomer Hipparchus of Nicia, who made the first major discovery in astronomy, comparing observations more than a century apart, Hipparchus proposed that the axis around which the heavens seemed to rotate shifted gradually, though very slowly. Now, he it was a proposal of theory. Guess what's happening in 2012? Our axis is actually moving and it's rotating and shifting. Um, Earth shifted 25 centimeters last year during the Japan... Um, Earthquake in March. This is Kepler and his laws. I looked that up. What on earth is Kepler's laws? Did not. I didn't even know that the Kepler satellite was named after this Johannes Kepler. And I found this out on line seven. I thought that was really cool. And this is all his. He did a lot of physics and stuff. So he did. In 1619, Kepler published his third law: the square of the orbital period t is proportional to the cube of the mean distance, a from the sun, half of the sum greatest and smallest in distance formulation, two, t2 equals k a3. That's the calculation. And then a watt is one joule per second. A watt hour is then the number of seconds in an hour, 3,600 times one joule per second, of, or 3,600 joules. A kilowatt hour, which will operate a 100 watt light bulb, a very bright light for 10 hours is 3,600,000 joules and cost less than 10 cents in most of the United States. Zero point joules is a very small amount of energy. So that's about levels of energy. By using not the sun, but the shadow cast by the Earth on the moon during an eclipse of the moon. During an eclipse, sun, Earth, and moon form a straight line, and therefore the center of the Earth's shadow is at the point on the celestial sphere, which is exactly opposite that of the sun. And then we've got the eccentric key of of the Earth's orbit, which determines the closest approach to the Sun, also changes periodically. 
as does the inclination of the Earth's axis to the ecliptic. But overall, the mo notion that ice ages may be linked to the motion of the Earth through space may be currently our best guess concerning the causes of ice ages. So, and this is from the ISTP GSFC NASA government stargaze. Uh, spectrus. The magnitude of the Mil Milankovic effect depends on the difference between, oh, this was posted July 28th, 1999, between largest and smallest distances from the Sun. That in turn depends on the eccentricity of the Earth's orbit, which varies with a 100,000 year cycle. Okay, so Moon regulates the tilt angle of the Earth's rotation axis that comes up, and I'll go to my thoughts so we don't run out of camera time here. January 11, 2012, 2.02 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, my thoughts. 6EQUJ5 is part of the whole reason that some binary numbers captured on a satellite from outer space became known as the famous well. Radial telescope signal from 1977. It's been over 30 years and still no one's cracked its code. Sure, several have tried, but it's never enough to satisfy everyone. We all have our views and opinions, but we don't always agree on the outcome of our theories, tests, and trials, right? Several things came up while Googling this mathematical equation on line 7. Lunar Euler, an analog of a logarithm. Kepler's laws for the planets that SETI in 2012 is currently scouting out with its Kepler satellite. Named after the man who discovered them back in the early 17th century. Distances between planets, how and what to calculate to come to a conclusion based on mathematical equations and facts from Hipparchus at Earth's axis rotation theory. In 2011, we saw Earth rotate an extra 16 degrees after several big earthquakes and tsunamis hit us. I found out the Earth moved 25 centimeters when the Japan tsunami earthquake happened in 2011. Now, if you look at our solar noon, it starts around 12.25 p.m. to 12.30 p.m. in North America now. Our weather patterns have changed drastically here in Canada. So I'm beginning to think that all these theories of Earth's axis moving to be true. Scientists predict that the Arctic and Antarctica snow caps will melt in 2020, but that's now been moved up to 2012. As of January tw 2012, sorry, Antarctica has been having a heat wave with a temperature at 9 degrees Celsius as opposed to its normal temperature of minus 26. Not only is this global warming, it's also caused by the shifting of Earth's axis so that you get someone else's weather along with the increase in CME, coral mass ejections, heating up Earth's inner core, which in turn will cause the ice to melt, making our sea levels rise right about 297 feet. I'm running out of battery power. In 2012, it will be interesting to see if the theory that Earth's axis will flip totally in this year. For North America, Canada, we will have the equator's tropical island weather, and they will have ours four seasons with wind, rain, snow, and heat waves. It's scary because if that oxygen happens, our rainforest will suffer and we will have a lack of oxygen. This will cause thousands of deaths and economic failures from all nature's destructive forces, something we've never seen in our lifetime. Okay, sorry. And this is... We get to take a look at mathematical foundations, logarithms, how they work. And that's the link. The basic math functions will explain themselves as we look deeper and deeper into exploring outer space and other areas of the universe, which are currently being mapped by the Kepler Space Telescope satellite. 